so hello guys and welcome to my welcome to my channel sir today in this video we will discuss some important numericals on electric heating and electric welding sir. and here i have got a list of questions and today in this video we will try to solve all these numericals sir. and here you can see in the first one here we have a 2.5 kilowatt 240 volt single phase resistance oven is to have a nichrome wire heating element and if the wire temperature is to be 1500 degrees celsius and that of charge 450 degrees celsius estimate the diameter and length of the wire the resistivity of nichrome uh, alloy is 42.5 ohm micro ohm centimeters and assume the radiating efficiency and emiss emissivity of the element as 1 and 0 0.9 respectively so here for, for such type of numericals first of all we need to de determine whether the wire is uh, a circular in nature or, a, or a rectangular in nature sir. so in order to determine here we have to read the question carefully here a single phase resistance oven is to have a nichrome wire heating element and if the temperature is given here similarly the charge is given sir. and here you have to determine the diameter and length of the wire sir. and here similarly in, in the second question so you can see here a stripe of thickness is given here in the and in the question if the stripe is given it means that it is the nature for uh, rectangular it is the case for rectangular sir. and if the stripe is not mentioned then you have to assume that it is of circular in nature sir. means the wire is circular in nature sir. so for first question the stripe is not mentioned so we will assume that the nichrome wire is of circular in nature sir. so here starting with the solution and here we have given the parameter as a power p is given as 2.5 kilowatt in the first question sir, and that is 2500 watt similarly the voltage is given as 240 volt in the question sir. here you can see 2.5 kilowatt 240 volt and again the wire temperature is 1500 degrees celsius and the charge is 450 degrees celsius similarly the resistivity of nichrome is 42.5 ohm uh, micro ohm centimeters and the radiating efficiency and emissivity of the element is assumed as 1 and 0 0.9 and 0 0.9 respectively so here we have, we have given the power similarly voltage and a radiating efficiency the value of k is given as 1.0 similar emissivity e is given as 0 0.9 and here rho is given as here means the resistivity as 42.5 micro ohm centimeters and so we can write it as 42.5 into 10 power minus 6 since it is in micro ohm so 10 power minus 6 ohm centimeters and again this is in centimeters so we can write it as 0 0.425 into 10 power minus 6 ohm meters now since this is the case for a circular so we will use this relation so 1 upon d square equal to pi b square upon 4 rho into p for circular case we are going to use this relation so so 1 upon d square equal to pi b square upon 4 rho into p means pi into and voltage is given as 240 given in the question so upon 4 into and here the value of resistivity is given as 0 0.425 into 10 power minus 6 ohm meters and again p the value of p means power is 2500 watt so from here we will get 1 upon d square as 42.5788 into 10 power 6 and this is our equation 1 now we have the formula for heat dissipated as s is equals to 5.72 ke into t1 upon 100 to the power 4 minus t2 upon 100 to the power 4 watt per meter square so 5.72 into k and e the value of k and e is given here and the value of k is 1 similarly the value of e that is emissivity and this is 0 0.9 so on solving and also the temperature at t1 and t2 is also given so we have to convert these in kelvin so in order to convert in kelvin we have to add to 73 so on solving all the value we will get here 4946.47 watt per meter square now heat is dissipated equal to electrical power input and simply you can use this formula p is equals to pi dl into s and here in place of p you have 2500 watt and pi dl into s so pi dl into s and it just you have obtained the heat dissipated, dissipated yes as 4946.47 watt per meter square so we will get here on the squaring we will get d square l square equal to 2500 upon pi into 4946.47 square so we will get here 0 0.0000 again 0 0.002588 and this is our equation 2 
Now here we have obtained the equation 1 and equation 2. And in equation 1 here we have the relation for 1 upon d square. In equation 2 we have d square l square. Sir. And on solving equation 1 and 2 we will get here the value of L. And the value of L is going to give 4.79 meters. Sir. Similarly the value of d will be 0 0.00336 meters. So the diameter will be this and similarly the length will be this. So this is our required answer. Similarly here in the question number 2 here you have a 3 phase 440 50 hertz star connected to 20 kilowatt oven and the temperature of the wire is 1200 and rate of charge is 700 degrees Celsius given. And if the radiating efficiency is 0 0.6 and emissivity is 0 0.9 design the heating element and a stripe of the thickness 0.025 mm having a resistivity given this value and as previously said if the stripe is given we have to uh, understand that this is the case for rectangular so let's see the solution sir. so for, first we can see here a 3 phase 440 50 hertz star connected 20 kilowatt oven is given here since 3 phase so for that for 3 phase the power per phase will be 20 into 10 power 3 upon 3 since we have to divide it by 3 4 power phase so we will get here 6 6 6 7 watt and phase voltage will be 440 upon root 3 so we will get to 54.034 volt now the resistance of a type will be r equal to vp square upon p and here we have vp and similarly we have p so we will get here 9.68 ohm now assume if the if L is the length of the stripe and W is the width of the stripe, then for that case the resistance of the stripe will be R is equal to rho L upon omega uh, means W into T or simply for uh, uh, simply for a rectangular case we can use this formula R, R as R is equal to rho L upon omega into T. So from here L will get the relation from uh, will get the relation of L upon omega. So L upon omega will be 230.476 on substituting the remaining value. So this is our equation 1. So here the heat dissipated from the surface and here the heat dissipated formula is H is equals to 5.72 Ke and T1 upon 100 to the power 4 minus T2 upon 100 to the power 4 watt per meter cube. And we have known the value of k and e similarly t1 and t2 is also given in the equation sir. just we need to substitute the values sir. so on substituting we will get here 117 724.4 watt per meter square sir. and again the formula for power in case of uh, uh, rectangular so we have p is equals to 2 w l into s sir. and again p is given uh, we have obtained the value of p here as 6 6 6 7 watt so P is equals to 2, 2 W L into S and here we will get the relation of W L is equals to 0 0.0283 meter squares. So this is our equation 1 sir. So we have obtained equation 1 and equation 2 here is our equation 1 L upon omega and similarly equation 2 omega into L sir. So on solving omega, uh, equation 1 and 2 we will get the value of W and L. So this is our required answer sir. Now, Now let's see question number 3. So in question number 3 here you can see a cubic water tank has surface area of 6 meter square and is filled to 90 percentage of the capacity 6 times daily and water is heated from 20 degrees Celsius to 65 degrees Celsius and losses per square meter of tank, of tank surface per 1 degree, temp 1 degree Celsius temperature difference is 6.3 watt and find the loading in kilowatt and the efficiency of the tank and here we have to uh, obtain the loading in kilowatt and the efficiency of tank and the specific heat of water is given as 4200 joule per kg per degree Celsius similarly 1 kilowatt hour is given as 3.6 mega joules so let's see the solution sir. so here in the question suppose let one side of tank is given as L and area is given in the equation as 6 meter square sir. so surface area of tank will be 6 L square since surface area of tank is a formula is a 6 L square and the surface area is given as 6 meter square so 6 L square equal to 6 will get L as 1 meter sir. 
and the volume of tank will be V is cos L cube. So the volume will be one meter cube. Now here in the question you can see mm, here a cubic water tank has surface area this and it is filled to 90 percent of the capacity six times of daily liquid. So for that here we have water to be heated daily is six times. So six times into capacity is 0 0.9 means 90 percent is given. So 6 into 0 0.9 it will be in meter cube and if we multiply with 1000 we will get here 5400 kg since 1 meter cube since 1 cubic meter water weighs 1000 kg. Now heat required to raise the temperature water we have the formula as ms del theta and all the value is given means ms del theta the value of m is given and especially it is also given similar del theta means temperature difference is also given. So, so we will get here 1020 into 10 power 6 and in megajoule we will get 1020 megajoules and we know 1 megajoule is equivalent to 1 upon 3.6 kilowatt hour so if you divide by 3.6 we will get the result in kilowatt hours so we will get here 283.5 kilowatt hour now losses from the surface of tank and the losses here in the question the losses from the surface of tank is given as here you can see Question number three here. Losses per a square meter of tank surface per one degree Celsius temperature difference is 6.3 watt. So here 6.3 watt per meter square per degree Celsius given. So 6.3 into per meter square. So area is 6 meter square. So into 6 into per degree Celsius. And here the temperature difference is. 65 means 65 minus 20 per degree Celsius and again we will get the result in here if we multiply here we have obtained the value as 6.3 means 6.3 watt per meter square so for per meter square we have means area is given as 6 meter square since here you can see is equal 6 meter square so 6 into 65 minus 20 and is going to give here 40800 watt hours so we will get in kilowatt uh, watt hour so we will get here 40.8 kilowatt hours Now, energy supplied will be 283.5 plus 40.8 means this 40.8 and energy supplied will be here 283.5 kilowatt hour and Okay, sorry guys so here we are we are discussing in these questions so here we can see so heat required to raise temperature of water is ms ms del theta 
and the m is 5400 into s is 4200 and again delta is 65 minus 20 so you'll get it as 1020 means 1020 into 10 power 6 joule and 1020 megajoules so we know 1 megajoule is equal to 1 upon 3.6 kilowatt hours so you'll get the value in kilowatt hours now here loss from the surface tank will be 6.3 watt per meter square per degree celsius since here you can see in the questions losses per square meter of tank surface per 1 degree celsius temperature so difference is 6.3 watt it means here here we have given 6.3 watt per meter square per degree celsius so we get 6.3 into per meter square and here we have the area as a 6 meter square so into 6 into per degree celsius so 65 minus 20 into again we have to multiply here with 24 in order to get in watt hour means in hour so we get here 40800 watt hour so in kilowatt hour 40.8 kilowatt hour now energy supply will be 283.5 means this value plus this value so we get 3 to 4.3 kilowatt hours and now in loading in kilowatt will be 3 320 means this is in kilowatt hours so if you divide by 24 so you'll get in kilowatt so you'll get here 13.5 kilowatt now the efficiency of tank will be output of an input into 100 percentage and here in place of output we'll use this value means heat required to raise temperature of water and in place of input value we'll use this energy supply value into 100 we'll get 87.4 percentage now similarly here we have the question number 4 as in question number 4 you can see estimate the rating of con induction furnace to melt 2 tons of zinc in 1 hour if it operates at an efficiency of 80 percentage and a special heat of zinc is 0 0.1 and a latent heat of fusion is of zinc is 26.67 kilocalorie per kg and melting point is 555 degrees celsius and assuming the initial temperature to be 35 degrees celsius so here in the question the mass quantity of zinc to be melted is given as means m value of m is 2 ton and 2 ton is equivalent to 2000 kg similarly t1 is given as 35 degrees celsius similarly t2 as 555 degrees celsius now a specific heat of zinc is also given as 0.1 kilocalorie per kg per degree celsius and latent heat of fusion is given as 26.67 kilocalorie per kg now heat required to melt 2 tons of zinc and here we have the formula as ms into t2 minus t1 plus l and m is 2000 into a specific it means value of s is 0.1 and again t2 minus t1 again t2 minus t1 is given in the equation and plus l and again latent heat of fusion is also given in the equation so we will get here 157340 kilocalorie and in order to calculate this kilocalorie into kilowatt hours we have to divide by 860 so on dividing with 860 we will get here 182.95 kilowatt hours now energy input will be energy required upon if is now energy input will be energy required upon efficiency so energy required will be 182.95 upon efficiency is a 80 percent is given in the equation sir. so efficiency is a given as 80 percent in the equation sir. so we will get here 228.7 kilowatt hours now rating of fuelness is can where where the formula for rating of fuelness means energy input upon time of operation in hours and energy input is a this value upon time of operation in hour and a time of operation is given as one hour in the equation sir. so we'll get here 228.7 kilowatt hour now in question number five here in question number five you can see estimate the efficiency of a high frequency induction furnace that takes 10 minutes and here the time is given as 10 minutes to melt 1.8 kg mass has 1.8 kg given of aluminum and the input to furnace is 5 kilowatt and the initial temperature is 15 degrees celsius a specific heat of aluminum is 880 joule per kg per degree celsius and melting point of aluminum is 660 degree celsius and latent heat of fusion of aluminum is 32 kilojoule per kg and 1 joule is equivalent to 1 upon 3.6 and written by minus 6 kilowatt hour so let's see the solution sir So in question number 5, we have this data given as M, the value of M is given as 1.8 kg, similarly T1 is given as 15 degrees Celsius, 
T2 is given as a 660 degree Celsius and the value of ES is, a, is given as 880 joule per kg per degree Celsius. Similarly, the value of EL means Latin air fusion given as a 32,000 joule per kg. Now, here we have the formula to calculate the heat required to melt 1.8 kg of ammonia as M into S T2 minus T1 plus EL. And here we have given the value of EM, ES, T2, T1, EL. Just you need to substitute these values. So on substituting, we will get here 1079280 Joule. So we will get, since this is in Joule, and we know, and if we, and we know 1 Joule is equals to 1 upon 3.6 into 10 power 6 kilowatt hours. So if you divide it by 3.6 into 10 power 6, we will get the value in kilowatt hours. And now rating of fitness is given as energy input in time in hours and energy input is given as 5 kilowatt in the question and time in hour is given as 10 minutes so we need in hours so 10 upon 60 10 minutes given as so 10 upon 6 you will get here 0 0.833 kilowatt hours and the efficiency will be output of an input and here the output will be 0 0.3 means heat required to melt 1 by 100 kg of volume here we have obtained 0 0.3 kilowatt hours similarly the input means for input, we will take this rating of fitness and we will get here 36 percentage. So this numerical was quite easy. Now let's see question number 6. So here, in question number 6, a low frequency induction fitness operating at 10 volt in secondary circuit takes 500 kilowatt at 0 0.8 power factor when hearth is full and if the secondary voltage is maintained at 10 volt estimate the power absorbed and the power factor when the hearth is half full assume the resistance of the secondary circuit to be there to be thereby doubled and reactance to remain the same So let's see the solution here. So in my question number 6, the value of V is given as 10 volt. Similarly, power given as 500 kilowatt and power factor is 0 0.5. Now the secondary current will be P upon V cos phi. So just put the value of PV and cos phi will get here 10 to the power 5 ampere. Now, impedance of secondary circuit when hot is full so at the condition when the hot is full we have z is equals to v upon i and v is 10 volt upon i is 10, 10 to the power 5 ampere given so 10 to the power minus 4 ohm now resistance of the circuit secondary circuit when the hot is full so r will be z cos phi and here we have obtained the value of z and power factor is given as 0 0.5 so we will get here 0 0.5 into 10 to the power minus 4 ohms similarly, similarly the reactance of secondary circuit when hot is full. So x will be z sin phi. And just we need to substitute, we know the power factor is 0 0.5. And in terms of sin phi, we will get a root under 1 minus 0 0.5 square. So we will get the value of x as z into sin phi means 8.66 into 10 power minus 5 ohm. Now, condition when hot is half full. So condition when the hot is half full. In the last part in the question, sir. There are some conditions mentioned here. If the resistance of the secondary circuit to be uh, to be thereby doubled and the reactance to remain the same. Since the resistance is doubled and the reactance remains same when the earth is up full, so resistance of secondary circuit R dash is 2R and the reactance uh, remains same that is X dash is equals to R. So impedance will be 2R square root under 2R square upon X square. So on substituting the value of R and X, we will get here 1.323 Newton by minus 4 ohms. And cos phi will be r dash upon z dash, and r dash is equal to 2r, and z dash is and we have z dash, and we have obtained this value. So if you substitute, we get here 0 0.756. Similarly, secondary current i dash will be v upon z dash, so v will be 10 upon z dash will be 1.323 into 10 to the minus 4. So we'll get here 7.5585.7898 amperes. And the power drawn will be i dash square into r dash. And here we have this is the value of i dash. Similarly, r dash will be used from here. That is r dash is equals to 2r. So we'll get the power in kilowatt as 571.32163.
as kilowatt and now we have the question number 7 sir. here a low frequency induction furnace whose secondary voltage is maintained at const maintain constant at 10 volt maintain constant at 10 volt and it takes 400 kilowatt at 0 0.6 power factor when hearth is full here and assuming the resistance of the secondary circuit to be inversely to be inversely as the height of the charge and reactance to remain constant find the height up to which the hearth should be filled to obtain maximum height so here we can see in the, the value of b is given as 10 volt similarly p is given as 400 kilowatt and power factor is given as 0 0.6 and secondary current will be P upon V cos phi so we will get here 6667.6667 newton by 4 ampere and impedance on secondary circuit when earth is full will be 0 is equal to V upon I so we will get as 1.5 newton by minus 4 ohm on substitution value of B and I now resistance of secondary circuit when earth is full so we will get here R as Z cos phi and just to have obtained the value of Z and power factor is given so we will get the value of R as 0 0.9 in 10 by minus 4 ohms and the reactance of the secondary circuit will be X is equal to Z sin phi and again Z sin phi again we have obtained the value of Z and just to need to substitute the value of sin phi and sin phi will be root under 1 minus power factor is given as 0 0.6 so root under 1 minus 0 0.6 is square so the value of secondary circuit uh, uh, that is X will be 1.2 in 10 by minus 4 ohms and let height of the charge be x times of the full load that is a small s is equal to x into capital S and in the question uh, we have to assume that the resistance of the secondary circuit to be very inversely as the height of the charge so for that we will use this relation here x s is equal to r upon x s so r the value of r is given as this 0 0.9 10 by minus 4 upon x and now here power drawn or heat produced will be maximum when resistance of the secondary circuit will be equal to the reactance of the secondary circuit means this value should be equals to this value in order to in order for the uh, in order for the power drawn or heat produced will be maximum when the resistance of the secondary circuit will be equal to the re reactance of the secondary circuit so the value of x will be here from the will be 3 upon 4 that is maximum heat, heat will be obtained with the height of the charge as three fourth of the height of the hearth. Similarly, here we have the next numerical as we have discussed question number seven. So now we will discuss the question number eight. So in question number eight, a laminated wooden board, thirty cm into sixteen into twenty five cm, is to be placed from 20 degrees celsius to 170 degrees celsius in 10 minutes by dielectric heating using 30 mcps cycle per second 30 megahertz supply source and a specific heat of wood is 0 0.35 and the density is given as 0 0.55 gram per cc and the relative permittivity is given by 5 and power factor 0 0.05 and here we have to determine the voltage across the workpiece and current through the heating elements and assume loss of energy by conduction and why conduction, convection and radiation as 15 percentage so here starting with the solution so in question number 8 in order to calculate the volume we have V is equal to 30 into 16 into 25 since a wooden board of 30 cm into 16 cm into 25 cm is given so volume will be 30 into 16 into 25 cm square so it will be 0 0.012 meter square so and we in order to calculate the value of C that is capacity and C is cost epsilon naught into epsilon r into E upon T and the value of epsilon will be 8.85 Newton by minus 12 and epsilon r is the relative permit is given as 5 in the question and the area will be means 30 into means area will be this 30 cm into this 16 cm so in order to calculate in meter we will get 0 0.3 into 0 0.16 so we will get it as, it as 0 means 8.4994 into 10 by minus 12 
farad here and again the thickness t is a is a is taken from here means 25 cm so 0.25 now rho will be here means here density is given as 0.55 gram per cc and since this is in gram so if you multiply with the 10 by minus 3 you will get in kg and cc means centimeter cube and again here Uh, this is in centimeter cube. So in order to bring in meter cube, you have to multiply again with 10 to the power 6. So you'll get here 550 kg per meter cube. Means the density will be in kg per meter cube. Now a specific heat of wood will be since a specific heat of wood is given as here. Here in the question. In question number 8. The specific heat is given as 0 0.3. Here the unit is not mentioned here. So we'll assume. So we'll assume the unit is given as uh, calorie per gram per degree Celsius. So we need to convert it in joule per kg per degree Celsius. So we'll get here 1463 joule per kg per degree Celsius. Since this is a calorie per gram, so in order to calculate in joule per kg, you have to multiply 4.12 into 10 power 3. And yes will be ms delta and m is given as 550 again. Again here 550 is given here. And value of yes and delta is also given. Sir. And in the question here we can see. In question number 8, a thickness to be heated from 20 degrees Celsius, from 20 degrees Celsius to 120 degrees Celsius given for 10 minutes and for 10 minutes by directly heating using here 30 mcps cycle per second means 30 megahertz and a specific heat of wooden is given, it's a similar density is also given, similar relative power will be given 5 and here we have to determine the voltage across the workpiece and current during the heating cell. So here H will be ms delta theta and in order to calculate the M we have 550 means this density into 550 into means 0 0.01 means this volume. So M will be density into volume and the value of ES is 1463 this value and delta will be 170 minus 20 as temperature given the equation sir. since this is in joule and in order to calculate this joule into kilowatt hour we have to divide by 3.6 into 10 power 6 so we'll get here 0 0.402325 kilowatt hours and energy input will be energy input will be means this value upon and upon the and all together here you can see the radiation of 50 percent is given sir. so we'll have more one minus 0 0.15 so we'll get 0 0.4733235294 kilowatt hours and power input will be energy input upon time in hours and power input this value upon time in hours and time in hours and in the questions the time is given as a 10 minute so in order to calculate in hour we have to divide by 60 so 10 upon 60 so we'll get 2.839941 kilowatt and here we have the value the formula to calculate P P as 2 pi F C B square into cos phi and you need to calculate the value of voltage means B so B will be root under P upon 2 pi F C cos phi so just here we need to substitute all the values here And here the value of P is again given in the question and 2 pi F again 2 pi F is given and F is given as here 30 megahertz so 30 into 10 power 6 2 pi F and similarly cos pi is again given as 0 0.05 and the value of C is given as here here we have obtained 8.4994 into 10 minus 12 so here we have used these values so we'll get the voltage as 8 uh, means 5954 volt. 
Now, in order to calculate the current, we have i is equals to p upon v cos pi. So, uh, just we need to substitute all the values here. We'll get as 9.54 ampere here. Now, in question number 9, Here in question number 9, a slab of insulating material 150 cent square centimeter in area and 1 centimeter thick is to be heated by dielectric heating say. and the power required is 400 watt at 30 megahertz and material has a relative permittivity of 5 and power factor is given as 0 0.05 and here you have to determine the necessary voltage. So here this question is quite simple. Here we have given the value of P cos power cos of cos phi means power factor, similarly frequency given, and just use this formula to calculate the value of C and mean C is cos epsilon naught into epsilon r into E upon T. Just substitute all the value to get the value of capacitance. And in order to calculate the voltage, we have V is cos to root on P upon 2 pi epsilon cos pi. Again, substitute all the value, we'll get the value as 800 volt. We'll get 800 volt here. And in question number 10, uh, this question number 10 is uh, repeatedly asked in the examination. So question number 10 is more important here. And this question number 10 can also be asked in the final examination. Sir. So prepare this question number 10 properly. So here we have the power required for dielectric heating of a slab of resin 150 cm square in area and 2 cm thick is 200 watt and frequency is 30 mega, uh, megawatt, mega, megahertz and the material has a relative permittivity of, zero, uh, relative permittivity of 5 and the power factor is given as 0 0.05 and determine the necessary voltage and current following through the materials. If the voltage is to be limited 600 volt and what will be the frequency to obtain the same heating? Say? So here the power P is given, cos phi is given, frequency is given and from this information you can calculate the value of C. So C will be 33.2 into 10 power minus 12 uh, Faraday. Similarly, you can calculate the value of B means voltage is required. So, B will be root under P upon 2 pi FC cos pi. So, just substitute all the value, you will get here 800 volt. And in order to calculate the current I, I will be P upon V cos pi means 200 upon 800 into 0 0.05 into 50 ampere. And the voltage is limited to 6, uh, 600 volt in the given, as given in the questions. And from this information, we, we have to calculate the frequency obtained for the same meetings. So since the heat produced is varies F B square, so F2 F2 into V2 square equal to F1 into V1 square. So from this you'll get the value of F2. So F2 will be 53.3 megahertz. Now in question number now here we have question number 11. A small piece of plywood having a dimension of length 5 cm and width 2 cm and a thickness 1 cm is placed between two electrodes. Having dimension length 25 cm, width 2 cm and, and again width of 2 cm distance between them. Electric current at frequency of 10 MHz is passed through the electrodes of heating wood pipe by the process of dielectric heating. And if the power consumption for heating, the piece of wood is 1 kW. And determine the voltage drop across the electrode and the current through it during the process of heating. And assume that the plywood is an imperfect dielectric and has a relative permittivity of 5 and the power factor is given as 0 0.04. So let's see the solutions here. So all these numericals are based on the formula. Just remember all the formula properly. You can easily solve all the numericals. And here in question number 11. A small piece of plywood having length here, this small piece of plywood having length 5 cm is given here, and again the thickness of 1 cm is given, means this has a thickness of 1 cm, and this plywood is placed between two electrodes, means this is our two electrode, and this plywood is placed between them, sir. 
between two between two electrodes and this plywood has a length of this 25 centimeters and again with his two centimeters given in the equation so from here if you consider a area a1 so for area a1 from here to here we can consider see here 25 minus 5 will get 20 and again this thickness will be 2 centimeters so a1 will get 25 minus 5 into 2 so you will get 40 cm square and in meter square you will get here 0 0.004 meter square similarly a2 will be this plywood area so 5 into 2 so 5 into and this thickness is given in the equation as 2 centimeters so 5 into 10, 10 centimeters square so you will get here 0 0.001 meter square and the thickness is given as 2 centimeters similarly t1 and t2 here this is t1 and this is t2 so t1 and t2 is 1 centimeter similarly epsilon r1 is 5 epsilon r2 is cost 1 in years and here we have the formula to calculate capacitance means c is cost epsilon naught into a1 epsilon r2 upon t plus a2 upon t1 upon epsilon r1 plus t2 upon epsilon r2 into and in, this will give the result in faraday so just substitute the value will get here 2.509 into 10 by minus 12 faraday now the voltage will be v is cost to root under p upon 2 pi fc cos pi so on solving we will get here 1 means 2 valve 1594 volt and current i will be p upon v cos pi so we'll get here 1985 ampere now now let's see the question number 12 and here in 12 or 3 phase arc furnace is used to melt 4.3 tons of steel in 1 hour and determine the average kilowatt and kv input to the furnace arc voltage arc resistance and power factor of the current drawn from the supply. A specific heat of steel is uh, 444 joule per kg per de uh, degree Celsius and a latent heat of steel is given as 37.25 kilo joule per kg and melting point is given in degree Celsius. Similar initial temperature in degree Celsius and overall efficiency of furnace given as 50 percent is input current given as 5700 and the resistance of the transfer refer to secondary and reactance of the transfer refer to secondary is given as 0 0.08 and 0 0.014 ohm respectively. Similarly, in question number 13, same data is given. The only difference is the difference in unit. Here, in question number 13, the specific heat of steel is given in joule per kg per degree Celsius. Similarly, a specific heat of steel in the question number 13 is given as 0.12 kilo calorie per kg per degree Celsius. Means the unit are different. So, the process for both the question will be same and just there will be a little difference while converting the unit. So here you can see the energy to melt over 4.3 tons of steel will be ms del theta plus ml and the value of ms del theta is given in the equations and ml is also given in the equations and if you substitute all these values we will get here 273.93132 into 10 uh, so we will get 80 sorry 273.93132.80 joule and we know 1 mega joule is equal to 1, 1 upon 3.6 kilowatt hours so we get here 3.6 if you divide by 3.6 in 10 by 6 you will get the value in kilowatt hour and since this was in joule and in similarly in question number 13 here you can see Since specific heat, this was given in joule per kg per degree Celsius, so the obtained specific heat was in here. We can see here the energy to melt 4.3 tons of steel, and this result is in joule. And similarly, for question number 13, this result will be in calorie. So here this is in kilocalorie, so the result will be in calorie here. So 1 kilocalorie will be 1 upon 860 kilowatt hours. So if it was here a kilocalorie, so we'll, then we will divide it here as 860 to get in kilowatt hours. But right now this is in joule, so in order to calculate in kilowatt hours we have to divide by 3.6 into 10 power 6. So we will get here 760.92 kilowatt hours. So use this technique in 12 and use this technique in question number 13 and the remaining process will be the same and now energy input will be this value upon 
50 percent efficiency is given so upon 0 0.5 kilowatt hours will get here 1521.841 kilowatt hours and now power input will be energy input time in hours and energy input is this value and time in hours means one hour is given so we'll get here 1521.841 kilowatt and now current is given as 5700 ampere in the questions so the voltage drop due to resistance of the furnace level will be i into r and the value of i is 5700 into r is given as 0 0.08 in the questions so we'll get here 45.6 volt now voltage drop due to reactance of the furnace will be I into X. Similarly, I is also given and X is also given in the question. Just we need to substitute the values and you will get here 79.8 volt. Now open circuit phase voltage of transformer will be uh, uh, transformer secondary will be root under VA plus I R whole square plus I into X to the power whole square to the power 2. Now, in order to calculate the cos cos phi means power factor, we have VA plus IR upon root under VA plus 45.6 to the whole square plus 79.8 square. Now, power into will be 3I into VPS into cos phi using 1. And if you use this one, we'll get the power input is equals to here. The power input in the question is given as 1.5 here and the power input we have obtained here this 1521.841 kilowatt hour and 3 into i is 5700 into bps and bps will be root under ba plus ir square plus i into x square and cos phi will be this value so we have to multiply this power factors now this value and this value will be cancel out means this value and this value will be cancel out here and from this we will get the value of VA. So VA will be 43.4 volt. Now arc resistance will be arc voltage upon arc current. And arc voltage is 43.4. Similarly arc current is 5700. So we will get here 0 0.0076 ohm. Now open circuit phase voltage of transformer secondary will be. Means this value. Sorry. This value. Just substitute the value. We will get the open circuit phase voltage of transformer secondary. Similarly. KVA drawn from the supply will be 3 VPS secondary into IPS and VPS secondary is this and IPS is 5700 given in the questions. This will be in voltage means VA and similarly we will get in 2044.134 KVA and the power factor will be cos phi. So the power factor will be this value. So just substitute the value of VA IR will get the value of power factor. So these were some important numericals from electric heating and welding chapters. Hope you enjoyed the lectures. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thank you.